In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we're reminded in our scripture readings that our lives should help us draw closer to one another and to God through generosity and compassion. So as we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist, we ask God to be with us and to give us loving hearts so we continue on the mission of Christ by loving our neighbor. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us of our sins. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you send us out to share the good news. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, graciously keep us from all adversity, so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah, the prophet, went to Seraphath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise the Lord all my days, make music to my God while I live, make music to my God while I live. Put no trust in the powerful, mere mortals in whom there is no help. Take their breath. Happy who are helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all they contain. I will praise the Lord all my days, make music to my 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. But a poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, had contributed all that she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear in our scripture readings about how God provides to people and how some people give thanks to God by sharing with others. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we understand the importance of offering thanks to God for what we have by assisting others. It doesn't have to be a tremendous amount of money, but we must give from the heart. For example, we hear in the Gospel about the widow's mite. A mite is a tiny donation. However, that tiny donation can make a great impact on other people. For example, 16 years ago, Hurricane Katrina devastated the city of New Orleans and the surrounding areas as well. And soon afterwards, there was an interview on a TV station 
with a pastor of a church in Rain, Louisiana, a pastor called Father Wagner. And he explained how his parish was trying to provide housing to those driving up, escaping the hurricane to flee the storm, and how his parish was trying to help them in their darkest hour. And so Father Wagner explained how those who had come searching for help had to evacuate their homes immediately. They brought very little with them, and now they needed assistance. A pastor in Maryland called Father Peter Daly saw the interview and knew he had to help in some way. He contacted Father Wagner in rain and asked, what do you need? He said, my parish in Maryland is not a wealthy parish, but we would like to help in some way. And so Father Wagner explained that they need just simple items, a toothbrush, maybe a towel, some socks. And so the pastors decided that the quickest way to help those in need was to purchase gift cards and give them, send them down to Father Wagner's parish. Gift cards such as one to Walmart so people could buy what they need. As I mentioned, Father Daly's parish wasn't wealthy, but they wanted to help. And within a short time, that Maryland parish had purchased over $20,000 worth of Walmart gift cards. They were all in smaller amounts, such as $10 or $25. They bought so many cards that the Maryland Walmart had to put in an order for more gift cards to be shipped from their corporate headquarters. Father Wagner in Louisiana said after he received the gift cards, he became one of the most popular people in Louisiana. Meanwhile, the parishioners in Maryland said that they were thrilled to do something, anything to help someone else in need. And it did. Their help went directly to people who were in need, even if it was only for just some toothpaste and some socks. As we just heard in that story, our small donations can make a great impact on people's lives. Our donations can take on various forms, from baking a cake to even offering a gift card to someone who is in need. You see, Christ teaches us that it's not the dollar amount that matters, but the attitude of the giver. And so we should try to follow his example and be generous and humble. As I mentioned today's scripture readings, focus on helping others. In the first reading, we heard about Elijah. And Elijah travels to a different country, to the land of Sidon. And while he's there, he meets a poor widow who recognizes Elijah. And she shares her last bit of food with him, because that's what he's requested. And she knows that he is a man of God. And because the poor widow did this, the Lord supplied her with enough flour and oil to make bread for an entire year that was enabled to have her and her son survive. In the Gospel, as I mentioned, we hear about the widow and giving her tiny donation, her two small coins, only worth a few cents. And because the widow was very poor, widows that time are very poor. There is no income really. She could only donate a small amount of money. And people ignored her offering. They focused rather on those who were rich, those who were wealthy, giving from their surplus. But in the eyes of Jesus, that widow's donation, that widow's might is mighty. In her own compassionate way, she gives of what she has, very little, not from her excess. And Christ tells us that she makes her offering out of great love for others and to give thanks to God in a very humble way. That spirit of humble generosity, that spirit of service, really is a, the attitude of when one puts the community instead of individual needs. 
It compels us to help those who are hurting, those who are in need. And that's why our faith is so different than what society teaches now. We are called in our faith to be humble and generous and compassion, not worried about what we want as a number one priority, but what is important for our family, for our friends, for our community. Locally, we've seen the effects of hum humble generosity in our own parish as well. Uh, we donate to the Lamont Food Pantry. We offer to our sharing parish. We also volunteer and donate to various charitable projects, such as the Baby Bottle Collection for the Women's Center of Chicago, the Buckets of Hope for those who are affected by the hurricanes in these last few years. Those are wonderful symbols of putting God and others as our number one priority. Great symbols of humble service and generosity. How do we put God and God's people first in our lives? When have we recently given from our poverty, maybe something that we are struggling with? How have we given to someone else who was in need? Have we had the opportunity to donate, whether it's our money or our patience or our time, to someone else so they can benefit? What have we received in return? Have we received the gift of happiness or satisfaction, joy, or peace? Let us continue to follow the path of those who share lives of humble generosity in their lives. By doing so, we can give thanks to God for all that we have received, and we can help others in some great way, whether it's with some food and oil, whether it's with just some small coins, or even a Walmart gift card. As a people of faith, we profess our faith together let us proclaim the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we offer our prayers to our Lord. Knowing the Lord's gracious love for us, together we offer our prayers. For church leaders, may they be faithful stewards of God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations of the world and for an end to violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For veterans and all who have served our country, especially those still struggling with the effects of war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all here at our celebration and for all who seek God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased of our parish community and for the intentions of this Mass, we pray. For Jerry Lichtenwalter, Jim Clementi, Lillian Pallock, Irene Revinson, Fran Burst, Joseph Diziaba, Patty Mahalik, Kathy Burke, George Stoops, Sandy and Jean Tashida, Angie Kiros, the parishioners of St. Alphonsus and St. Patrick Parish, Mary Pasowitz, Ken Wilson, Joyce Serna, Charles Newman. 
and for those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O bountiful God, you help us to seek your presence. Graciously inspire us with your love, for we ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. God of mercy, in this Eucharist we proclaim the death of the Lord. Accept the gifts we present and help us to follow him with love, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You have no need of our praise, yet our desire to thank you is itself your gift. Our prayer of thanksgiving adds nothing to your greatness, but makes us grow in your grace through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so with angels and archangels, we share the hymn of glory as without end, together we proclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice, to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, her blessed husband, Saint Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen. giving thanks to God for the generosity we have received in life. We pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Right now, let's offer one another some sign of peace.
My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are unable to receive communion at Mass, we will pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Thank you for watching our Mass. Our church is open at full capacity. We welcome you to join us. Masses are required. Mass is offered on Saturdays at 4 p.m. at St. Alphonsus Church, Sunday at 7.30 and 11 a.m. at St. Alphonsus Church, and 9 a.m. at St. Patrick Church. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we thank you for the nourishment you give us through the Eucharist. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and in the strength of this food from heaven, keep us dedicated to your service. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. the wisdom of God.